Could you go against your father's legacy by siding with the enemy who might be morally correct? Hey everybody, this is Yusuf for Video Game Plot Summaries, and this is a plot summary of Radiata Stories. Alright y'all, you have spoken. To be honest, I was on the fence about doing this game for a video game plot summary. I mean, it's really verbose. Talkin, talkin, talkin. But there's so many of you that love this game, I can't see why I wouldn't. I will give you a warning though. This game deals with issues of racism. I mean, there's no actual real races other than white people in the story. So if you're the type that likes your racism as it pertains to elves and goblins, but not actual people of color because elves aren't real as far as you know, or you are simply just not racist in a equal rights but respect differences sort of way, then you're all set. Not that I'm going to be pausing the game to talk about identity politics or anything. The story literally branches when you pick between humans who all happen to be one color, or every other race on the planet. I didn't write it that way, I promise. Alright, with that out of the way, it's time to find out what happens when you try to follow in the footsteps of your dead father who is a celebrated warrior. We start out with this awesome scene of this dude named Karen Russell slaying a two-headed dragon. But then it's abruptly stopped to show Karen's daughter, Adele Russell, talking to her parents' pictures. She addresses her mom and dad, but it's only Karen's picture up there. I thought that they were hiding the mom's picture for a significant reason, but nope. Anyway, today is the day that her brother, Jack Russell, tries out for the Radiata Knights. He's following in his father's footsteps. Yay! His sister has been training him all this time. Why she isn't a Radiata Knight, I don't know. As we move along in the game, we see that there are women in the Radiata Knights. I was excited for Adele to be part of the story, but she wasn't really. So after informing Jack in one more day of training, Adele hands him Karen's sword, which is too much for Jack. There are trials for the Radiata Knights. Jack is pretty cocky and thinks that he will knock them all out. Piece of cake. Assist sends him on his way when he gets there. I finally made it. Dad, are you watching? He is put in a room with a myriad of interesting characters. Russell looks at the draw and finds out that he has to fight Ridley Silverlake. He's confident that he's going to destroy this dude. However, when Jack gets called up to fight, he sees that Ridley is a woman. Ridley's a girl? Sheesh, I was looking forward to a real fight. They get in the arena and Ridley is on a whole nother level. One of the things that lets me know this game is dope is that they started this trial without giving us a tutorial. So basically I was flailing around with no idea what the heck was going on just like Jack would really be doing. I thought it was a nice touch. Ooh, his attack is so damn slow. Huh? 
I'm gonna beat you. So while Jack was knocked out, they called everyone in to discuss the result. Jack wakes up like, Huh? Come and get it! And skulks into the arena. However, bless the gods of nepotism, because the testers notice that Jack is the son of Karen and puts him in the Radiata Knights anyway. So it's Ridley who whooped everyone's butt and Jack who slept through most of the fights. When Jack is confused, one of the leaders tells him it's basically because of his dad. Both Jack and Ridley are put under the command of Gantz, who, Lark says, has a similar situation to Jack. So now Jack is a Radiata Knight peon, complete with a tiny double room. That's your bed, back there. No! When you're done with the death <laughs> whales, you okay. didn't get changed. <laughs> Fine. Later, Jack, with a crappy noob outfit, and Ridley meet up with Gantz, who dubs them the Rose Crochon Brigade. Let me just say this real quick. This game plays it pretty lighthearted. Like stuffed dolls with porcelain heads stabbing each other lighthearted. I will try to highlight the jokes that I think are pretty funny, but obviously all of them don't land. The idea is that Gantz is a good leader, but he's in way over his head. And Jack and Ridley are bitter rivals, even though right about now it's pretty one-sided. The next morning, the Rose Cochon Brigade roll out and see Ridley's father, Jasney Colton, Lord Chamberlain of Radiata. Oh! Lady Ridley is his lordship's daughter! Huh? But Ridley's last name is Silverlake, right? Lord Jasner was accepted into the noble Silverlake family. Their family crest is the Great Eagle of the North. Only those related by blood may bear the august Silverlake name. Oh, well, I guess we know which donkey is pulling the cart in that family. Yep, and where the donkey leaves, the ass has to follow. Well said, young Jack. You have a sharp eye. You don't miss a lot, do you? Are you saying I'm an ass? My apologies, sir. Jasney threatens Gantz so that nothing happens to Ridley, and off they go. They meet up with Clive, a young priest that is supposed to accompany them. Gans explains that outside the castle, there are four guilds, warrior, priest, mage, and bandit. From what I'm to understand, the Radiata Knights handle things outside of the kingdom, but the guilds handle things inside. The idea is that guild members help on missions every now and then to promote togetherness and also so that the government can watch the guilds to make sure they all have equal power and can't cause trouble. First, the brigade has to meet up with Clive. And Clive says he's new to the Alassian order and that he can't fight. Gans is surprised that this Clive guy is so green and they head out. And truthfully, if I knew the government was watching my guild to see if it needed to stifle my guild's power, I would send out Clive as well. In the meantime, Jasney tells the Radiata Knight, Natalie, to spy on his daughter. Larks rolls up and thinks that it's a possible workplace harassment case. Weird game. You okay, sis? Alright then. I'm watching you, Jazz. Natalie, is there a problem? No, sir. We were just talking. He wasn't bothering you, was he? Huh? Oh, no. Not at all. I see. Good. As long as it wasn't that.
Back to Rose Quachon, Gans explains that they have to go to the dwarf village to get supplies. The big problem is bringing the supplies back because they will probably run into goblins and orcs. Jack is super excited to fight an orc even though the orcs are super deadly. So the Rose Crescent Brigade, or the RCB, gets to the dwarf village. The village leader, Ganovich, brings up Gan's father, Gawain, or Gavain as he calls it, right away. He also brings up that they are raising the prices for the minerals that the dwarves mine and gives Gans a letter for larks. Gans knows that his superiors will not be happy with this. But supply and demand. A side note, in the hotel room, Gans tells Jack that Gans's dad, Sir Gwain, was a Radiata knight and was an intermediary between the fairies and Radiata but he disappeared 16 years ago. Jeez, that's quite a long time. So at 3 a.m., the RCB escort Donovich and the goods back to Radiata. They run into goblins who are very silly, but not much of a problem for the RCB. Jack is upset that they didn't have to deal with any orcs though. Hmm, is that so? Ah. Uh... And I really wanted to have a fight with my orcs. What do you mean, my orcs? You'd be squashed into the ground before you could get your sword out. Hey, you never know till you try. Besides, the more tough fights I get into, the better I'll get. Eventually, my hidden superpowers will be unleashed. You read too many comics, idiot boy. When they get to the castle, they hand the letter to Larks and go to bed. The next day, Ridley and Jack's rivalry heat up as the RCB receive an assignment to deliver a letter to the Light Elves. Try not to be late, Kay. You either, Kay. Real talk, I'm realizing this as I'm editing it. I'm, I'm here for the pettiness between Riley and Jack. I really am. I don't know why. Hello, Captain. Good morning. I'm right on time. Morning, Jack. Nice to see you all fired up as usual. Heh <laughs> Check it out, Ridley. I got here right on time. So, don't make a big deal out of being normal. Excuse me? I was here before you. What's your point? Was I late? I don't think so. All right, all right, you two. Are we ready? Let's get going, shall we? Sir! Sir. <laughs> now, Light Elves hate humans, so they have to bring a dude named Genius from the Vareth Magic Institute with them to serve as a buffer. By the way, they are still being watched by Natalie and Leonard. Leonard is Jack's roommate. The RCB gets to Genius's house and Gans ticks him off by forcing his attention in the middle of a complex problem. Hello, Master Genius. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! <sighs> I was on the verge of finding the complete solution to the non-human biophilic element resonance accumulation principle. You get it? Because he's a genius. They all get to the gateway of the City of Flowers, which surprisingly has not a flower in sight and two light elf guards come floating down asking what they want. The genius steps up to tell them that they have an important message for the king, but the elves tell him to kick rocks or they'll be pushing up daisies. That's a city of flowers joke. Shut up, go home. If you're still here when we get back, you're dead. So, that was a waste of time. I guess Genius isn't as well respected as Gans thought. Genius has one more card to play. He knows Lord Nogera, the elder of the Dark Elves. On the way, Gans does his super move. Gans Breaker! 
Brace yourself! Ha! Wow. They travel through the woods and fight a bunch of huge spiders until they finally get to the Dark Elf Village. There, they waltz on through right to Nogera. Nogera right away knows what they're there for. He's like, nope, nope, nope. After they plead a little bit, Nogera gives up and Gans tells him the message is about coming to an agreement with trade routes and a peaceful coexistence. Lord Nogera assures them that Lord Zane, his brother, will have none of it, because Zane hates humans. But Nogera humors them and sends some messengers. Later in the day, a Lady Dark Elf comes into the Dark Elf village and collapses. Apparently, there is a big blood orc outside causing trouble. Jack hears the word orc and he gets super excited. Yes, sir! We finally get to take on some orcs! What? Do you have any idea how strong orcs can be? Of course I do! The tougher the opponent, the better I can show off my skills! Look! I wouldn't talk to him too much if I were you. Idiocy is contagious. This looks like a job for the Rose Crochon Brigade. They get outside and it's pretty big. Natalie and Leonard, who are still spying, are confused because a blood orc is not indigenous to this area. Nevertheless, it is a good time for them to make themselves known and fight. Unfortunately, the moment Leonard stands up, he is bopped on the head by a blood orc that somehow was quiet enough to creep up on him. Looking at these guys, blood orcs don't seem to be the picture of stealth in the woods. But whatever. It looks like the RGB is on their own for now. Okay, check it out. Here he comes. Come and get it, big guy. You really think you're ready to face Jack Russell? The fight starts, and the RGB holds their own until this happens. Damn it. This guy is tough. Real tough. Ah! Woo! <laughs> Ridley! Lady Ridley! Nogera shows up and starts to summon up enough strength for a final move. He doesn't want the RGB to take care of the Blood Orc by themselves. You see, if the RGB saved the Dark Elf Village, then Nogera would be honor bound to put in a good word with his brother at the Light Village. He likes genius, but he does not want to be a piece in this game. I don't blame him. So, the RGB stalls until Nogera blasts the orc and ends the fight. Natalie drags Leonard back to Radiata to tell Lord Jasney about his daughter. In the meantime, a new Radiata knight named Cross appears out of nowhere, after all that action, and tells Nogera to run away. Cross is a giant douche, but you can see that just by looking at him, right? Nogera is planning on doing some hocus pocus to save this little elf boy and Ridley before they are gone for good. He plans on performing a transpiritation by combining the two spirits together. Of course, Douche Cross has a problem with it because he's also a racist. I'm not going to trust you lot and your depraved rituals. Ridley will be cured by human hands. Then I'm afraid the girl is doomed. Well, if it's between this and dying, Cross can suck it. So Lord Nogera leaves to gain his strength and Jack carries Ridley back to Radiata. Once everyone is back and Cross is gone, Genius is a little skeptical. Why was Cross even in the area in the first place? He said he was on a special mission. Sure, dude. A special mission to be racist. 
Later on, Jack can't sleep, so he wanders around the castle. He runs into a scene in which a dude named Reynos loses his shit, and it takes a couple of nights to get him in his cell. And Jack is trying to understand what is going on, and then Sir Dinah shows up. He's the general of all the Radiata Knights. He instructs Patrick, the guard, to open the cell. Then, Dynas judo chops the lunatic's ass unconscious. Dynas tells Jack that there's a disease in the kingdom that makes people go suddenly crazy, like rabies or something. Mum's the word, of course. After that, Jack goes to sleep and we check on Lord Jasney. He is talking to a dude named Lucian. Lucian suggests that Jasney makes Ridley leader of her own brigade so he can have better knights protect her. Jasney is still mad, so he goes to Larks and convinces him to disband the RCB. Larks protects Jack and Gans because of nepotism. Gans is the son of Sir Gawain. Jack is the son of Sir Cairn. Those men were two of our finest knights. We cannot simply wipe out their names with a single gesture. But Jasney brings up a charter that Larks wrote that makes him relent. You are aware, of course, that the dismissal of the knights in question is mandated by the knights' charter. Uh, now, who was it who wrote the charter? Can you help me out here, Larks? Hmm? I do. So, Larks, do you really intend to waive the punishment that you yourself laid down in that document? Very well, Lord Jesney. I will see to it that the Rose Cochon Brigade is disbanded as you have requested. Excellent! So Gans shows up at Jack's room with a piece of paper to break the news that not only is the RCB broken up, but Gans and Jack are fired. Jack wants to fight it, but Gans doesn't want to bring trouble to Larks. What a guy. Gans leaves that night with the plan to join the Warrior Guild, Theater of Vancor. What a weird name. But first, Gans must drain his sorrows in some good old-fashioned liquor. Or Kool-Aid in, uh, <laughs> what is it, libations? I don't know. I don't know what they call it in this game. <laughs> you know how some, some uh, games try to cover up that they're talking about real actual liquor, you know, because it's against the rules, apparently? Well... Maybe he's drinking a lot of Kool-Aid. Anyway, Jack follows, and when they get to the bar, they witness a dude named Jarvis getting kicked out for being pretty inebriated off that Kool-Aid. Jarvis challenges Jack and gets knocked on his butt immediately. You're lucky I had the beers. All right, I'd kick your... Just a big mouth wino. Uh, Captain? After a bunch of drinks, they finally go to Theater Vancor. They walk in the door and get split immediately. Gans gets Sergeant Gerald and Jack gets Sergeant Caesar. In Caesar's office, Caesar asks Jack a few questions, but Jack is so empty-headed, he just doesn't understand. This puzzles Caesar, but it's good enough so he sends Jack up to Deputy Gerald's office. Hey, you trying to kill me? <laughs> you managed to dodge. So, Gerald, of course, whoops Jack all over the training area. But Gerald sees something in Jack, so Gerald passes him and sends him to Elwyn, the leader. And Elwyn likes him too, and welcomes him to Theater Vancor. We can use you. Excellent! You won't regret this! Wait till you see what I can do! Do not misunderstand me, Jack. You are still very weak. Jack goes back to Thanos at the front desk to find out that Gans didn't make it. And Thanos takes Jack to his new room and Jack still complains. 
even though it's his own place and it's better than what he had in the castle by far. Seriously, it's way bigger than the room I have now in real life. And it comes with a phonograph? What are you complaining about, dude? Jack goes to see Gantz, and Gantz is so disappointed, he just decides to leave. Just then, Ridley finds out about the RCB and goes looking for Jack, but he's already gone. She confronts her dad, but gets dizzy in the process and has to leave. Ridley! What's wrong, Ridley? Nothing. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little dizzy. The next day, Jack heads to meet his new boss. Huh? It's the drunk dude from last night, Jarvis. And Jarvis takes Jack to the training ground to meet Daniel. Daniel is pretty whiny and mad at Jack because he's pretty chill. They spar. Wow. You're really bad. How did you ever manage to get into the guild? Shut up, you! You're only a little better than me! Jack beats his butt, and Jarvis gives Jack the corporal position and makes Daniel private. Jack doesn't want it, but Jarvis explains that in Theater Vancor, all that matters is who's the strongest. The next mission is to get a croco gator hide for a chick named Anastasia of the Alassian Order. That's the guild Clyde came from. Daniel gets creeped out because he loves animals so much and bails. So Jack and Jarvis head out without Danny to the elf region. They slaughter the croco gator, skin it, and head to Anastasia. Once they get there, they are, uh, stifled by her beauty. I see that you have been struck dumb by my beauty. It happens all the time. Yes, indeed, Lady Anastasia. Beauty? No one's talking to you. Anyway, she looks at the crocogator's skin, which is a lot smaller than I expected. Seriously, that thing we killed was huge. I hope it was just a sample. So Anastasia appraises it and finds that it is some really high quality hide. Oh, this is it! Good enough to pay 20 grand for it. Wow, 10,000 doggles each? 10,000? And I don't know how much they were charging in the first place, but Jack thought that it was a salary gig, apparently. Look at him, he's losing his shit. Play it cool, man. Even Jarvis is thinking that he can finally buy some of that top shelf booze. Or is it grape juice? On the way back, they run into Daniel and ask him why he bailed. And Daniel is a vegetarian and has a pet crocogator. That makes sense. All right, everybody, I got to cut it off there. Um, I haven't wrote the whole script yet, you know. Um, I'm doing them one at a time uh, in parts so I can kind of enjoy it. A lot of times I do these really long ones and I get really tuckered out because I finish the, uh, the script and it's like over 20 pages or something more than that. This one's going to be, you know, quite a long one, but the story is nice, so I'm not super upset about it. I just don't want to get burned out or whatever. So anyway, um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.